Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It's 7.30 on March 23rd. Thank you for being with me. I love the opportunity we have to be together and to visit and to pray. Okay, so for the next few days, we're going to be talking about habits. And we've talked about habits before. Sometimes we've called them holy habits. So uh, I've recommended to you you Are What You Love by James Smith. It's a great book on spiritual disciplines, a wonderful book. I'd show it to you again, but I think I've got it loaned out for right now, so I don't have it with me at the moment. Nonetheless, excellent book called um, You Are What You Love by James Smith. I'm not going to reference that one today, but I wanted to remind you of that as a, a book well worth your time. Today I'm going to lean on a, a different book, though. It's not a spiritual dis discipline book per se. If I had to give it a category, it probably would be a self-help book. So that means it, it never quotes the Bible or mentions Jesus at all. But what it does is it studies the realities of human nature. And I'm not talking here about uh, sin. That's an important piece to study. I'm talking about creational realities, about creational realities of our humanness, right? The things that motivate us or the things that discourage us. This book does a really fine job of addressing those realities. So here's the book I'm going to be talking about. It's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. So if you can see it in the book, in the picture there. Okay, again, um, it's not coming at this question from an explicitly Christian perspective, as, for example, James Smith does in You Are What You Love, which, again, excellent, excellent book. I love James Smith books. This, this one gets into more uh, specifics on developing habits, though like the logistics of how we actually do it, all right? But Mr. Clear, uh, James Clear, he, he does tap into, like I mentioned, these creational realities of human nature. And for that reason, I think it's full of powerful insights that we can bring to bear on our call to live meaningful lives as embodied creatures of God. Okay, so here's our very simple point for today. We're going to have a couple, but here's one of them that Mr. Clear makes. Habits function like compound interest, all right? Habits function like compound interest. So the effects of your habits multiply. They pile up the more you repeat them, all right? So you're all familiar with compound interest, right? So you invest money and it earns interest, and then that interest earns interest, and then that interest earns interest, and then on and on and on. So the benefits pile up on themselves. The same thing goes with habits. But here's the thing. We struggle to believe this because, because the results aren't immediate. So Mr. Clear puts it this way. We often dismiss small changes because they don't seem to matter very much in the moment. If you save a little money now, you're not a millionaire. If you go to the gym three days in a row, you're still out of shape. If you study Mandarin for an hour tonight, um, you still haven't learned the language. We make a few changes, but the results never seem to come quickly, so we slide back into our previous routines. I think we can all identify with that. He's, he's spot on there. He, and I would say, we might add that, for example, that we read the Bible for a week and we don't see any real changes in our life. We go to Bible study a couple times, you know, here and there, and it doesn't really make a huge difference in our life. I mean, we tried praying once with our family, but there was no real dramatic change, so we just slid back into our old habits. But here's the thing about habits. It's so important to grasp. The benefits take time to accrue. Okay, the benefits take time to accrue. So for example, if you go uh, to this, I love the title of this website, nerdwallet.com, nerdwallet.com, and you play with their compound interest calculator, uh, you'll see that at first, uh, the first several months or years of investing, the, the compound interest, it's not really that impressive. But if you trace it over time, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger so that the habit of disciplined investment actually produces incredible dividends. 
Okay, but, but it takes staying with that disciplined small habit, those that small choices of disciplined investment to get that compound interest. Well, the same goes with life. So Mr. Clear writes, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. Your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. Your net worth is a lagging measure of your financial habits. Your weight is a lagging measure of your eating habits. Your knowledge is a lagging measure of your learning habits. Your clutter is a lagging measure of your cleaning habits. You get what you repeat. He goes on, if you want to predict where your life will end up, all you have to do is follow the curve of tiny gains or tiny losses and see how your daily choices will compound 10 or 20 years down the line. Now, here's the hard truth, the truth that none of us wants to admit, but the thing we all need to come to grips with if we're going to live well. You are not your intentions. You are your habits. Okay. Make sure you're hearing that. You are not your intentions. You are your habits. Yes, that, that, that's not always what we want to hear, but, but that's truth. All right. I, and I know it's not easy to hear, like I said, but, but it's true. We all have amazing intentions. We don't all have amazing habits, but change is possible. And the key to change, to living this new life, to put it in biblical terms, is your habits. The little choices that you make every day that affect the trajectory of your life. Those little choices, they really add up over time. Our problem is that we tend to focus on results and not on the little life choices we make every day. So we tend to focus on the goal, right? We're all goal oriented. You hear set goals, make goals, and, and that's not bad, right? So we make goals like I'm going to be a generous giver. I'm going to learn the Bible. I'm going to be healthy. Hey, those are great goals, but they're probably actually the wrong focus. So Mr. Clear writes this. You should be far more concerned with your current trajectory than with your current results. Because remember, habits are the compound interest of life. So instead of focusing on our intentions or our ambitious goals, we need to focus on the habits we're fostering day in and day out. The simple, repeated choices we make every day. Focus on each day on the little choices you make each day. So for example, don't focus on winning the championship. Focus on showing up for practice. Don't focus on knowing the Bible better than so-and-so. Focus on the word, on your opportunity to spend time in it consistently. It's the little choices you make day in and day out that produce the compound interest. So Mr. Clear writes about how he came to this realization. He says, I began to realize that my results had very little to do with my, the goals I set and nearly everything to do with the systems I followed. Okay, now what's the difference? He tells us, goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the processes that lead to these results. This is actually really insightful. So you want to know the Bible better. That's a great goal. But you're never going to achieve it if you're fixated on the goal. I mean, think about it. The goal is to know the Bible, Bible better, right? The goal will never stop moving so that you're actually never going to achieve it, right? So, for example, I've been studying the scripture pretty intently for 20 years. And I still have the same goal, to know the Bible better. It's like I've been carrying this football, charging toward the end zone, and it keeps receding from me. I'll never get there. Now, I've made great progress, but ultimately focusing on this goal, which is too nebulous anyway, uh, it, it isn't really that helpful. So it's not the goal you need to focus on, it's the system. It's the daily or regular habit that you will establish that you're going to repeat over and over and over. So it's the simple, 
daily routine. It's the trajectory you will set for your life. It's the five minutes or 10 minutes you'll spend every day in scripture. It's the weekly Bible study that you're, you will attend. It's the additional 1% that you will save or give. It's the system. And we're going to try to get into more specifics in the next few days. I'm hoping I can get myself organized enough to get there. But if we don't get there, Mr. Clear has lots of great suggestions for getting our habits to stick. I mean, he really does a good job of, of teaching you how to get habits to stick. Now, I have one more additional insight I want to share from Mr. Clear. I think he's spot on here. He says, when you fall in love with the process rather than the product, you don't have to wait to give yourself permission to be happy. You can be satisfied anytime your system is running. And a system can be successful in many different forms, not just the one you first envision. So here's what he's saying. When we set up these lofty goals that we never achieve, we constantly feel guilty because we didn't get our goal. We haven't reached the, you know, the goal. We didn't make, have the result we wanted. So a lot of us just quit in despair. That's a really hard place to be. But if we can learn to delight in the process, in the system, in the little daily life choices that we make, then we get to be happy all along the way. And it just feeds the healthy, godly, disciplined choices. It's really a, a transformational way of thinking. Now, we'll have more to say about this, but for now, I really want us to see that what we're talking about is simple, daily, repeated choices. We're not fixated on lofty goals. We're focused on the trajectory. We're focused on our daily choices, the little choices we make every day. We're focused on the systems in our lives. And we're saying that, that our delight needs to be fixed in the healthy systems that we set up for ourselves. And we'll talk more about this, but I think there's some insight there. And just to make sure remember our two basic points for today. Habits function like compound interest and you are not your intentions, you are your habits. Okay. Certainly welcome follow-up questions, conversation. Love to hear from you. I think there's a lot there to chew on as you seek to try to you know, unpack this for your daily routines, your, your daily life. What's this going to look like for you? So I encourage you to start asking some of those questions. You're certainly welcome to message me, call me, email, text me, stop in and visit. I'd love to talk more about it. But let us take a moment to stop and pray. Good and gracious God, we praise you for your kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. And we praise you for calling us by the working of your spirit through your word to be disciples of Jesus. Teach us anew the power and importance of our habits. Show us the compound interest of habits, both for good and for ill. And deliver us from the false belief that we are our intentions, the protective lies we erect in our minds to insulate us from behavior changes. Empower us to delight in good and beautiful, righteous and healthy systems, regular repeated patterns of behavior that produce blessings in our lives, blessings for our neighbors and blessings for ourselves. Through these disciplined and holy habits, make us into joyful, contented disciples of Jesus that you might receive glory, the glory due your name, and that we might delight in the vocations where you have placed us. For you live and reign with Jesus and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with me today. I wish you the Lord's blessings on your day. We'll be back tomorrow at 7.30. Thanks.